Hello and welcome to my review of Liquid Smooth, as you can see here. And this particular build is from October 10th. Uh, I did update the kernel, however, as you can see there, it is 3.4.104, it's a Blackbird kernel. And um, this is actually brought to us by this developer right here, Raven Tech is what I'm going to say his name is, R-E-V-3-N-T-3-C-H. And um, this has been a fantastic ROM. The only issue I will tell you ahead of time that I have had is with reboots, and I've been developing Logcats, and um, I think I have it pinpointed to some thermal uh, throttling, possibly. So I've been playing with the settings, and I've been able to go a little bit longer without a reboot, but then it still happens randomly, and it's not attached to thermal throttling. But however, there's an update coming up soon. So let me go through here. You see it has Viper for Android already built in. This is very nice here. I did disable it. Uh, recently to test some other things and yeah, that's interesting let me take you right back out interface here you go you can set your density here you do not need apps like texture to do so you got your clock widget settings right here uh, pretty simple stuff um, but it's very easy to find very easy uh, to alter here next thing we got here is your power menu you can change what shows up when you hold down the power button. The menu that comes up, here's your recents panel. You can change your recents. You can enable the slim recent style if you want, or you can keep the traditional Android style here. And your shake events. I did test these. I'm not a big fan of shake events. It's uh, cool uh, when it works, but, um, and I, I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't work. It's just something I don't use often enough to keep enabled. So, kind of to eliminate issues uh, that I have to hunt down and try and troubleshoot, I just turned it off. Here we go, here's your lock screen, here's your interface, you can do 8 target, slider target, shortcuts, slider torch. You got your style right here, lock screen icon, your other customization of your widgets here, you can enable disable widgets here, battery run the lock ring, lock ring which I like, your battery status you can show as in text, you got your lock before unlock and your quick unlock settings there. Continuing down here, this is nice and easily laid out. I am a fan of this layout and liquid smooth here. You got your app circle bar. Uh, this does work and uh, I tested it. Kind of like it. Again, gesture anywhere. Not a big fan of it, but it does work. And you got your slim pie controls right here. I did not use pie. Uh, I tested pie, did not use pie. And of course you got your PA pie. So you got both different pies. Um, Slim Pie offers more customization, whereas PA Pie, just uh, aesthetically wise, kind of blends better with the Android concept. And that's again preferences, okay? So here we go again with buttons, and I do have five buttons enabled. And uh, even though I do wish they were spaced out a little bit better, uh, I did find it a little bit more usable than in some other ROMs. Continuing on, you got your ring targets here which uh, of course once you have your immersive mode or expanded desktop enabled it becomes a little bit harder to utilize but it's still there if you're using the Google Now launcher not a big deal you don't even need that unless you're using the power of the phone of course again if you see in mine I have the power button there and it works just fine menu visibility you get menu location you got your show landscaped and disable IME navigation bar. Here we go, nav uh, notifications. You got your active display. As always, I test it. I don't like it, so I disabled it, but it does work. I had no problems with it working. Uh, I find it to be more advantageous if you have an amyloid panel, and we have an LCD IPS panel here. Uh, you got your Halo. Halo also does work. Uh, I think Halo is outdated. There are people who are huge fans of it, and that's fine, but I'm moving more towards the Android L, where I feel like we're going to see a lot more ROMs going towards anyways, and uh, I don't foresee Halo making its appearance there. I could be completely wrong. I'm not a developer by any means. Here's your heads-up settings. You get some nice um, settings here in your hover. Okay, All these work. Um, here's your lock screen notifications. I'm a huge fan of these, and all the settings you've come to expect are here, and they work just fine. Here's your notification drawer. Here's your tiles and layout. You can add tiles. And just so you can see here, what you had to choose from, plenty. All right, tile style. 
You can change it from uh, three to four and even five tiles. You can change the colors, etc. Flip tiles. You got your brightness slider that can appear in your notification drawer if you want it there. You can change the background image. And obviously double tap on the taskbar works. But you can change your notification image as you see I've done here. Background image. So plenty of shortcuts, or plenty of sorry, customizations here. And here's your notification peak. Also does work. Status bar, here's your status bar. You got your icon customizations, you got your status bar customizations, you got your clock, your date, your network traffic, your brightness control. Your double tap to sleep is located here. Please make sure you enable it. But if you're using the latest Blackbeard kernel, also make sure you enable it in Trickster. Here's your expand desktop style. I chose to leave my status bar on. And you got your MUI um, light carrier label. If you want their notification count, signal display, etc. Performance. There you go. I don't know why it's prompting me. Oh, because I did a clean flash with the kernel not too long ago, that's why. Okay, so again, you got your built-in performance tweaker here. You've seen this in other ROMs. It is the same here. It is useful, provides um, some quick information at a glance and some customizations. Easy to reach to. You can set your max, fr max frequency. Okay, you can set your min frequency, which 300 megahertz looks like it's going to be your min. Here's your governor. I've been using, I've tried Optimax, On Demand, and IntelliDemand. I have not tried Dance Dance, but why not? We'll set that there. And here you have some fine tuning. I'm not going to give you pointers on that. That's for you to play with. And here's your GPU, max frequency. You can play around with your UV table as well, which is your undervolt. Uh, here's your tweaks for kernel tweaks. Here you go. I'm using the Zen scheduler. It works fine for me. I haven't had any problems with it, but if you want to know what else you get to choose from, you've got deadline, CFQ, Noop, BFQ, SIO, FIOPS, Zen, and VR. The only one I have tested, it, well, I'm sorry, I tested, I tested two of these. I tested uh, deadline and I've tested Zen. I'm going to go through all these settings. And I'll leave that to you, but they are there play around with them, enjoy them, but be careful because you can, of course, with anything, when you're messing with a kernel and performance, you can mess it up. Here's your ad blocker, your battery saver, built-in battery saver is kind of nice. You can turn it on, play around with your settings here. System app remover is always welcome. I like to see this in the ROM, so it gives you the ability to take out what you don't want in there. And uh, now you got your super user right here and your ad blocker. So. Aside from these customizations, you also get the total blackout if you're using liquid smooth gaps or TDRS gaps. You do have your CM theme manager here, and they do work. They have been tested. If you go into sound, they've done a little things different here. You have liquid smooth sound here. So there are some other settings outside of the liquid smooth settings, and they're pretty easy to find. You've got your quiet hours, and you do have some nice ways of enabling and customizing quiet hours here got your volume steps where you can customize your volume steps. I actually enjoy that. I think it's nice. Sound packs. I didn't test sound packs, but you know what sound packs are if you're familiar with OmniROM. And many other ROMs have implemented those. And you've got some other sound settings here uh, that you wouldn't normally be greeted with. And those, again, are easy to find here in your Liquid Smooth sound. If we go into display here, you'll see this is pretty standard stuff. Brightness, notification light, cast screen, daydream, font size. Disable immersive mode messaging. That's a new one for you. Identicons are located here for uh, uh, contacts that do not have pictures. Your rotation. I tried testing the screen recorder. It did not work for me. The power plus volume up did not initialize the screen recorder. You got double tap to wake here as well. Make sure you enable it. And scrolling through, you see you have a few other settings, including toast animation, scrolling animations, progress bar. And you can see I changed mine so it bounces a little bit. That's a nice little uh, change that you can add. And again, that's all preference. Other than that, everything else is what you come to expect. I am testing this on Dalvik. I switched it to Art and was not having very good uh, battery performance and was trying to eliminate options. So I reflashed the ROM, reflashed the newest kernel, and I just left it in Dalvik for testing. Here we go. We're going to run a quick benchmark here and we'll let this run. Um, and we'll show you what kind of numbers you can get. I can tell you that in day-to-day -day usage, this ROM is very speedy. I find it to, uh, I didn't see very much lag, if any, at all. Your usual suspects are still there. You do get a little bit in Facebook, and you do get a little bit in Tab Talk, but it, um, even Facebook seems to scroll a bit smoother in this ROM. 
So there's your results. Not as impressive as uh, I had gotten before, but it might have to do with the temperature of the phone. We can kind of verify that right quick. Let's see what we got here. I mean, we're at 48 degrees, so mm, not sure what happened there, but uh, definitely not the best benchmark, but it doesn't really translate because this ROM has been uh, very smooth. So if you care about benchmarks, you're probably going to want to skip and wait until the next version, but I can tell you that in day-to-day -day use, this has been an excellent ROM. All right, so jumping into our battery drain test here, you got... 14 hours, 38 minutes, 44 seconds off the charger. You don't see any reboots here. Don't mind these spikes. For some reason, these are happening. But as you can see on the bottom, there is no charging going on. we got 15% battery life left here, and we're at 3 hours and 30 minutes of screen on time. If are looking at our usage here, um, I mean, we kind of are doing pretty good. When we supposed to get down here in yellow, and we can look down here at our uh, awakes and screen ons, and um, I'm seeing some additional wake locks here at the bottom down here, but I'm going to go ahead and guess that with 15% left looking at the usage over the last couple hours, we'd probably easily hit the four and a half, five hour mark there. And this is on um, ART, actually. So here we are. We are on Dalvik. We are... Let me make sure we are... Uh, this is showing you... Here we are. Here we are on ART. I'm sorry, on Dalvik. And we are 10 hours, 56 minutes off the charger. You can see um, some wake lock activity here, but I uh, want to turn the Wi-Fi off. It even itself out. You also see a reboot here. Uh, these are my wake locks. This is Clash of Clans. This will kill your battery. Three hours and 26 minutes uh, off the charger. I still had 8%. I'm sorry, three hours and 26 minutes screen on time. And that was 10 hours, 55 minutes off the charger. And 19% that was Clash of Clans. That was me trying to drain the battery. That's an hour and one minute of gameplay on Clash of Clans. Going through again, here's 18 hours, 7 minutes off the charger, 30% battery life left. Uh, this is again on Dalvik, and I got 3 hours and 12 minutes left. And you can see that this is me not playing Clash of Clans. At 30% left with 3 hours, with three hours and 12 minutes screen on time, we could easily have hit the 5.5 hour marker there just from looking at my usage. Here's another test, 14 hours, 13 minutes, 20 seconds off the charger. Look at my wake locks, look at my screen on time. I've got them pretty close there, got a couple small wake locks there. Uh, two hours and 40 minutes of screen on time and just under 50 percent so I mean we're getting close to the six hour mark there. All right so we're going to go ahead and do our power on test and while we're doing that a few things about the ROM. Let's talk about the temperatures. Temperatures seem pretty consistent. It doesn't get as hot as some other ROMs that I've been on. I think uh, Raven Tech is doing a fantastic job with this kernel and continuing to work on it and this ROM shows. Um, aside from again the uh, random reboots that I'm having and um, it's been a very pleasant experience and I'm actually going to miss this Liquid Smooth ROM. It offers some very solid performance. Uh, it's very speedy. Free RAM is what you'd expect from um, a stock Android based ROM. And there we go. That's the bottom number down there. And I hit it just a couple, probably a second late. You can check the timer on the bottom. So probably around 20, 29 seconds, maybe 28 seconds on the reboot. Pretty good time there. Um, but again, this ROM is just very fluid. I don't see any issues. I don't see any staggering. I am using the uh, the launcher, launcher three, with this, and uh, haven't had any issues. Thought I should try something new as in the Google Now launcher, and uh, overall been a very pleasant experience. GPS works great with this ROM. Um, some things that do not work great would be the uh, map support for sending text message data over uh, the My4 Touch head unit. Uh, while it syncs and it does stream A2DP audio uh, very clearly and quickly, it does not allow the head unit to handle text messages. It also does stream clearly with the Kia Uvo system and uh, connects the first time every time pretty quickly. I did have uh, one time it rebooted and it seemed like it was a Bluetooth uh, issue, but other than that, it's pretty pretty standard stuff. The form, I'm going to leave you linked to below, is currently at 2085, so it's not that old. Um, and again, uh, do a search if you're going to ask a question. Um, it's probably already been asked. There is an update for this ROM coming. And I say that because 
I have a feeling that that will resolve the reboot issues that I've been having. I did share my log cast with the developer. He is super talented, and uh, we should be very glad to have him on uh, doing development for the LG G2. It does seem that we're not actually losing as many develop developers, and we are sharing developers. It seems that developers who are leaving the LG G2 community uh, are still keeping their G2 and still developing for it. I'll have some more videos to come to talk about what's happening in the LG G2 development community as per what's going on in XDA uh, coming up. And I have another video review for Plain Andy to follow.